らしんどいぞ Welcome back to another animation breakdown, and holy crap, do we have a lot of stuff to touch on today. After weeks upon weeks of me feeling really disappointed with these climactic episodes, 130 delivered in probably the best way possible. This is not only the best animated episode of Super, it is far and away the most animated thing out of all of the various TV animators franchise has had, and although it's probably not that difficult to beat, I am not exaggerating when I say this has better animation than Resurrection F the movie. Directed by Super's series director Ryota Nakamura and supervised by the two best regular animation directors Naoki Tate and Shuichiro Minabe, on paper this already sounded pretty good, but under them, oh boy, we have almost every top tier action animator on the series all bringing their A game and it paid off in a big, big way. This episode is exceptional, this was the big final fight to wrap up the final arc of the series and they did it. Up against one of the worst schedules around, they absolutely did it. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the wonderful people who made this episode possible. The first half supervision comes to us from Naoki Tate. Tate has had one of the most unfortunate experiences on Super out of anyone really. The first episode under him was episode 5, and despite his impressive history in the industry and all of his work on Dragon Ball Z, it's been so hard to shake the stigma surrounding his name as a result. Result. As the series schedule has improved, his work has only gotten stronger and stronger and he's really been giving it his all in this arc with the debut of Ultra Instinct sitting as his magnum opus on the series. That trend continues here as he opens this episode up with a remarkable action scene. Goku slams into the rocks behind Jiren and Tate gives us some beautiful impact effects before everything explodes and we get to see his trademark smoke. Tate is so great with little bits of character acting so even just Goku standing up and Jiren wiping his face are animated with such style and finesse. He's such an idiosyncratic animator and I love everything he's doing here. His drawings always look so effortless and that's so perfect for a form like Ultra Instinct. The gestural movement with Goku as he dodges Jiren sells the evasive abilities of this form pretty much perfectly. As Jiren jumps up into the air we get an awesome bit of exaggeration as Jiren's head comes towards the camera. Again as he throws the attack Tate distorts the face and smears the body and it conveys so much force behind the throw. The return is similarly beautiful with even more interesting effect shapes. This is such an awesome scene and an amazing way to open the episode with a bang. As his first scene wraps up, Atsushi Nikaido takes over. Nikaido is someone who's been with Super since episode 1 in fact, but much like Tate, he never really got to showcase his skills until far later in the series thanks to this punishing schedule. It was episode 85 that first alerted me to his skills, but it's his work throughout this tournament that has really woken me to his ability. He's a lot like Higashide, but his movement and line work is a lot more aggressive. It's plain to see here as Goku starts to backflip away from Jiren's blasts and the plumes of smoke explode around him. The timing is super smooth and I really like the effects work on the beams in places. This is especially true shortly after Goku flips away and Jiren starts pulling back this great looking blobby beam. You so rarely get that approach in Dragon Ball, but it's so effective here, I love it. This leads right into the most complex part of the cut where Goku runs towards the camera dodging the attack. Again, this is the type of work that's very similar to Higashide, and we'll see a cut from him later that's quite similar too, but the timing here is way more aggressive and snappy, and that's evident to see on the follow through punch to Jiren, which leads into some incredibly powerful and dynamic blows. The gestures, the facial expressions, they're so, so aggressive, and that feels very appropriate considering this serves as the climax of this opening fight as Ultimate Battle finishes playing. Tate comes in one last time to deliver the final punishing blow to round off Nikaido's scene. His exaggeration is just perfect here and he totally distorts Jiren's body to sell the impact of the punch. This is something we used to see in Dragon Ball Z all of the time and you can totally see why it looks excruciating. I kind of love that almost seamless transition into the long shot as they explode through the mountains too, but it's Jiren's explosive rage that I think I love the most. The super abstract explosive debris shape 
shapes look so interesting, again, it's this type of unique flair that sets exceptional animators apart. Next up is Jiren's power up, and I'm afraid I don't know who animated this, but I want to use it to talk just a little bit about the one negative I have here. This isn't actually exclusive to this episode, but rather super as a whole, and I think it's probably important to address this before the series wraps up. The effect shapes as Jiren's exploding with rage here are actually pretty nice, but you can barely see them because they've been blurred very heavily and covered in this fiery CG texture. This is something I've spoken about before with how Super's compositing team likes to blur the smoke. I'm bringing it up again in this episode because now we've got two characters covered in this CG aura with Beam sporting the same thing, smoke is also blurred and it makes it very hard to really digest and enjoy the animation because it's totally shrouded in this really overdone post-processing choice. I think it exists to add a bit of stylistic uniformity between episodes to mask the fact Super doesn't really have the time to be consistent, but it is a little frustrating knowing that there's lovely work being hidden. Hopefully the movie and any new series will take a different approach to things if time allows. Anyway, back to the good stuff, back to the hype, it is Chu yong sers time to shine, and his history on Super has probably been one of the most interesting things to follow. He joined the series for episode 34, and for most of his time up until this arc, he was nothing but a second key animator, meaning his job was to primarily touch up other people's work, ensuring the art was up to par. It wasn't until episode 90 really that he was given the chance to prove himself. He drew 100 cuts in 11 days, basically soloing the big fight in that second half. After that, although still providing second key animation here and there, his big contributions have been action scenes, learning from the likes of Naotoshi Shida and Yuya Takahashi. His scene here kicks off with a neat zoom out before Jiren lunges into the foreground, colliding with Goku and rotating around the screen. There's great foreshortening on that lunge, and you can tell she's a big fan of Z because these flurries are straight out of the Cell and Boo arcs, only shrouded in cool effects work that brings it into 2018 nicely. I love the way the end of the flurry slows and eases into the big collision. The best part for me is where Jiren launches his attack. We've been talking about Chu's amazing lightning effects for months now and it's all over this scene in a really big way. They look lovely and feed into some of the most impressive background animation as the attack flies towards Goku. The exaggeration on the final attack from Jiren is also terrific and goes hand in hand with what we saw Tate do earlier. The return Kamehameha from Goku is actually a repurposed Takahashi scene from episode 122 but it's been totally redrawn here, so it's not too distracting. This isn't the only instance of reused animation in this episode. There's little things here and there, mostly cutaways, little explosions, or scenes created for this episode reused a few times. It's negligible, it doesn't diminish the episode in any way whatsoever. This is certainly not a repeat of last episode. Chu finishes his scene with a pretty cool explosion, and that wraps up the first half. Yes, just the first half alone was that impressive, and we still have so so much to go. The second half is supervised by Shuichiro Manabe, who's someone who's been Super's finale action guy since the very beginning, so not much has really changed here other than his style, which has gotten a lot more polished but is still as aggressively stylish as ever. There's not a moment to breathe here as Kenji Miyuma comes flying in, very literally, with Goku to kick off this second half. Typically one of Toei's Procure stars, Miyuma first joined Super with episode 66 and became a regular key animator from that point onwards, providing some terrific effects heavy pieces throughout this arc at key moments. This is probably one of his strongest scenes on the show. Normally it's just his distinctive effects work that makes this scene so incredibly impressive, but here we get cool rotations, background animation, debris, and all topped off with those gorgeous shapes that make him one of the most recognizable animators at Toei. Although one of Chu's scenes is reused here, it's a small part of an otherwise totally unique scene that I really, really enjoy. Once again, interesting looking shapes in effects work is a great way to set yourself apart from other animators, and Miyuma is the master of this. I think as we hit the flashback, now's a great point to talk about the director of this episode, Ryota Nakamura. He first debuted on Super with episode 4, but it was the finale of the Universe 6 arc, episode 39, where he was first able to both storyboard and direct an episode, something that's so critical as far as allowing talented directors to fully realise their vision. 
He'd go on to tackle episode 48, the much-loved 57, 65, and 75, before being made the show's series director next to Tatsuya Nagamine. Although quite the idiosyncratic director himself, Nakamura's role has primarily been on the planning side of Super, with Nagamine handling the show's aesthetic. In a recent interview, Nakamura revealed that his goal was to improve the quality of the show's animation, and that upon taking this role, he coordinated the entire staff and spared no effort in making even the tiniest improvements. This likely involved working closely with the production managers to schedule the best staff for key moments, ensuring they had the maximum time that the schedule allowed. We know based on this interview that he planned out the much-loved TV special with this in mind, and I think it really paid off. Next to that, he's been making corrections to the storyboard throughout this entire arc to ensure the action can be the best it can be. He wanted to add as much variety to the action as possible, and even used live action references to help him with that. In fact, I think many of us noticed that in episode 100, where Kale throws Goku around is exactly like Hulk does with Loki in The Avengers. He is exceptionally talented, and I think his work on this particular episode is the perfect demonstration of that. All of the action we've spoken about so far comes from Nakamura's storyboard, and as we've seen, all of it is exceptionally varied, with some parts focusing on close quarters, hand-to-hand -hand combat, some on long-range key-focused attacks with dramatic dodging, and other parts that combine the two. It's all framed with real care, near enough every shot is dynamic enough in its composition to be a photograph or a wallpaper. He really took things to the next level with this fight from a purely visual standpoint. At the same time, direction is also about tone, pacing, and music placement, and that's also just as finely crafted here. After an explosive opening, we're given time to breathe. He uses silence appropriately, and shots of the environment to really underpin the rising tension before the second half begins. Jiren's silhouette pushing through the flames with nothing but the sound of roaring fire and the calming pulse of Goku's aura is stupidly effective. Any disruption to the action feels natural, finely crafted, and necessary. When we take a breather to hear Jiren's speech, we don't lose ourselves from the environment. The flashback takes place in Jiren's eye. Similarly, when the Muton Roshi reflects on Goku's character, it takes place in the reflection of his sunglasses. And even when that dissipates into a full-on flashback, Futoshi Higashide animates Goku vs Jiren as a silhouette overlaid over the top. That's such a powerful visual motif, and it makes it fundamentally clear that this is an artistic choice, and not one necessary to save frames. This isn't Nakamura's first time doing this either. Reflections in eyes or glasses have been a staple of his work on Super, and the idea of action laid over flashbacks first appeared in his work on Happiness Charge Procures episode 46. In that instance, it was to hide the work of a bad animator, but here it's to showcase Goku's progression and to keep the audience grounded within the fight. It's so well executed and I am overjoyed that he seemingly managed to bring his vision to life for this climactic fight entirely unhindered. This is a real triumph. So let's jump back to that fight then. As I mentioned, Higashide handles the action and the silhouette, and his work continues back into reality with his super standout effects work emphasizing every single punch. Higashide almost needs no introduction. He joined Super with episode 36, became a regular with 42, and has animated on the vast majority of episodes ever since. He essentially carried the future Trunks arc action entirely on his back. He is arguably the most valuable part of Super's production, and next to Naoki Tate here, he animates the largest number of cuts on this episode. His distinctive bubbly smoke is all over this scene, and his ultra-smooth timing makes Goku dodging Jiren's blasts feel so alive and dynamic. This is very similar to what we saw in episode 116 too. It is flip upon flip upon flip, covered with stacks of great smoke work. It's one of the most dynamic scenes in this episode, and if this happens to be his last, then this was a terrific send-off. His work here continues on and on, right through to the point where Toei's number one climax animator comes in in full force, Naotoshi Shida. Shida first blew us away with his animation debut in episode 57, which felt like a real landmark for the series. It was the first truly exceptional scene Super had ever been gifted, and when he returned for episode 66, that feeling that the show was headed in the right direction only grew stronger. Unfortunately, with his contributions in this arc, episodes 95 and 110, his work was quite limited with an emphasis on stills. Thankfully and appropriately, this last appearance on Super is easily his strongest on the series and is far and away the most representative of his skills as an animator. From the very get-go, his unmistakable 
character art and shading is on full display, packed with the most absurd detail that fans know and love. The shaking head serving as character acting in this scene is one of his trademarks, and something we first saw back with his scene in Battle of Gods. As he explodes with rage, we get a series of amazing looking impact frames that quickly become an incredible aura as Goku dashes into the screen. As he collides with Jiren, we get even more impact frames before the arena erupts, and she does super detailed smoke plumes from rock to rock. Two gorgeous stills feed into a finessed hand-to-hand -hand fight scene covered in unrivaled smoke and effects work. As Jiren is launched into the sky, Shida's famous camera work comes into play before even more impact frames when he lands. The movement in this section is absurd. As Goku rides Jiren's beams, he uses little key balls to facilitate the surf, leading into an almighty clash and some extensive background animation. This really is Shida all over. It almost feels like wasted breath describing every little detail he's thrown in here. Once again, this is his finest appearance on the show, and I could not be happier with what he delivered. The final still is incredible. Thank you, Naoto Shishida. With the end of his scene comes another familiar face. Kenotsuke is here once again for a major episode. Although his work on Super is largely limited, with only a few exceptions like episode 116, his appearance is always a welcome one, and the same can be said here. From the uppercut through to the end of the Kamehameha, Otsuka delivers a pretty competent tail end to Shida scene that feels perfectly appropriate for the moment and very traditional Dragon Ball in its execution. As Jiren lies on the ground and Goku prepares to launch his attack, it seems like Shuichiro Minabe's key animation comes in. The moment the screen turns black and red seems so Minabe that I'd be surprised if it turned out to just be a correction. The effects work as Goku's suffering seems very much like his work too, though he appears to have been corrected, presumably by Yamamuro, but it's plain to see his work in a few uncorrected tweens. Osamu Ishikawa pops up uncorrected for some of the cutaways at this point, so there's certainly a possibility that this is in fact him, but corrected by Manabe. Some people have theorised it may be old Z animator Toshiyuki Kano who made his debut here, but I can't say one way or the other, I'm afraid. Either way, it's a very effective scene that absolutely hinges on Nakamura's expert direction. As Jiren prepares to blow Goku away, Miyuma comes in for his final scene, providing a neat bit of background animation, and of course his super sharp and interesting effects for the big explosion. A few Manabe stills later, and that wraps up episode 130, the best animated episode of Dragon Ball Super by an absolute landslide. This really was the all-star episode of all-star episodes, and I'm honestly so amazed and overjoyed that they managed to pull this off. I had high expectations for this episode, but never in my wildest dreams did I think they'd be blown out of the water in such a big way. Total wall-to-wall -wall fantastic action, stunning direction, a hugely dynamic storyboard, and perfectly placed music. This was Dragon Ball at its absolute best, and it really has me excited about what the movie might entail if this is where we're at with its TV counterparts. Next week is the big farewell to Super, with young director Megumi Ishitani making her official debut, with the likes of Yuya Takahashi's key animation under Yamamuro's supervision. I'm sure it won't be a touch on this episode, but it already looks to be a pretty great one either way. Thank you so much for listening, and if you made it through this mammoth of a video, then I applaud you, I really wanted to do this episode justice by going into as much detail as possible, so hopefully I pulled that off. Be sure to leave a rating and let me know if I did okay. Subscribe if you're new, I'm certainly not going anywhere once Super ends, there is still so much to cover. Once again, I appreciate all of the support, and I will see you next time.